All right, and welcome to the quarantine experiment, day number three. So I thought we'd go around here and maybe we'd take a look today at doing something cool, which is projecting onto brick walls. So quarantine experiment day three, how to project your image in Affinity Photo onto a brick wall. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, gang, welcome to the quarantine experiment, day three. So we're talking about brick. Now, I realize not everybody has a brick texture in their home. You could do this with any sort of wall, but just in case you don't have the brick, I am including the download files in this lesson so you can follow along. Because if you don't have brick, it's not fair and you're not gonna be interested in the technique. But by the way, you can find brick textures anywhere on like Pixabay or Unsplash or any of those. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We've got the background, it's a pixel image. Let's go to file. And then we're gonna come over here and we're going to go to place. Let's place the image. Now in there I've included, it says 1280 wide manner. All right, boom. Now this one, I'll tell you, I'm including about half an hour's worth of work, let's say, into about a 10 minute video. So you may have to watch this twice. I am gonna kind of go a little quicker through this. It's got a lot of advanced techniques in it though. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do, right click, let's go ahead and duplicate that. Now you see how they're both images? Let's rasterize them so that we can do selections. All right, perfect. And now here's where some of the magic happens. Right now on this middle layer, I want you to change the blend mode and I want you to change it to soft light. Now you see nothing happened because this layer above it is still 100% opacity. Let's drop this to multiply and then let's drop it to about 50%. Okay, so you can go down to taste. I'm gonna start at 50% and you see how much of that wall now is coming through. You actually get some really good pieces of that wall coming in just like this. But now let's kick it up a notch. Come over to background, right click, duplicate. Bring this new background up above. And now let's turn that off for a minute. Come back to the original down at the bottom. You see where my blue is? Click that off. Let's add an adjustment layer and let's throw a levels adjustment on this. So let's click the levels adjustment, bring it inside the background. And now let's go ahead and push the blacks just a little bit, push the whites just a little bit. We want more of that wall coming through. I think that that's actually pretty cool. And if you wanted to, you could then come up to this top layer and you could kick up the darks and multiply a little bit to add a little bit more interest to it. So that right there is starting to look pretty good, but we can do better, right? I'm gonna show you now something. This is a little bit of an advanced technique. I'm gonna keep this at 50% just so we're consistent. And now on this background, let's bring it up. Now here's the trick. I want you to add two adjustments. I want you to add first a black and white adjustment and you don't even have to adjust it. Just nest it inside the background. And then I want you to add a levels adjustment. Okay, I'm gonna close this right now. We are coming back. So you should have a levels adjustment and a black and white adjustment. Now, you see in between the bricks, there's this white area. That's where the mortar is. I don't want that. I want that to be the black. So what I wanna do, I wanna invert it. I'm gonna add one more adjustment and it's gonna be an invert adjustment. Now, notice that we get all of that area inside the black. That's what we want. Remember when it comes to masks, because that's what we're setting up here. Black conceals, white reveals. I'm going to duplicate this. And now we're going to lock that down again. I'm going to lock this down. Not going to see it. I'm going to unlock this and we're going to see it. And now I'm going to readjust my levels here because I want to do a little bit different. I want a lot more white. All right, let's go ahead and crank that down there. We put too much dark into it, I think. We still get that good differentiation in between the bricks. I think that's gonna be a better mask. All right, right click, rasterize to mask. Yeah, you see how much more of that now is coming through? That's gonna look good. Right click, mask to below. That's a lot cleaner. You see how in the experiment there, everything is better? I'm actually quite happy with that. All right, now 
you see that as I multiply it, it doesn't really help me much. We're gonna have to adjust this bottom layer. Let's change it from soft light to hard light. Boom, now look at that amount of differentiation. That is a sexy beast right there. We don't have a lot of differentiation in the solid black, but that's fine. I'm gonna help you with that. So, overall now, I'm gonna destroy this background layer because I'm actually happy with my mask. Okay, now here's the next piece. In this background here, I'm gonna add a layer. It's gonna be a new life filter layer. We're gonna sharpen. We're gonna make an unsharp, now eh, let's do a high pass. Okay, what did the high pass just do? Bring it down into the mask. What a high pass does is it really pulls out a lot of the details. You see how much detail was created by this and I can keep going. It sharpens the entire image. You see how it's flexed in there? I'm gonna crank it up to an extreme amount. And now the trick to a high pass, you want this layer to be in overlay. Okay, now how did that work? Watch this. Off, on, off, on. You see that we kicked up the brick so that it actually looks better. All right, so the background layer, I'm happy with. Let's lock it in. This layer with the hard light, I'm happy with. Let's lock it in. This layer with the multiply, I think we can turn this and tone this down a little bit. Totally up to your taste. I'm gonna say right about here. I might go a little higher. I don't know that I would go above 50%. And I'm gonna lock that in. All right. Now, let's add some atmosphere. We're almost done. Lock it in. All right. Let's go ahead now and let's add a light. So we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna to go to layer. I'm gonna to go to filter layer. And I'm going to go to lighting. I'm going to choose a point light and I'm going to bring it probably into this corner. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of mood to it here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crank that down just a little bit there. I kinda of like that, I think that that's pretty cool. And now here's the trick. You can either load a bump map, which we haven't talked about, or really simply, you can just add a little bit of texture. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of texture brought on by that light, and that's gonna make it chunky as hell. Look at that, that thing is looking sexy. Now, if you're worried about blowing this out, you can always just come down and you can reduce the lighting a little bit and reduce some of that blowout so that you maintain the whites. All right, now, here's the next step. You remember how I said we're gonna take care of some of this black. Let's do this, grab both layers, right click, group them, and you see it didn't destroy it, and add what is called a mask layer. All right, now the mask layer, we're gonna come up with a brush. The brush that I'm gonna choose, you can grab any of your texture brushes here. So these come preloaded. Grab any of these old texture brushes here. I'm gonna grab, say, this one. I kinda like that. And you'll see what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna crank down the flow a little bit and I'm gonna crank down the opacity a little bit. I don't want it to look really bad, but I don't want it to look really good either. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start messing with some of the words here. Okay. Let's go ahead and up the opacity for some of it. And then I'm gonna come up big and bold and I might drop my opacity for this. Yeah. You see how I'm taking out chunks? Let's go ahead and raise my opacity a little bit more for a few of these. Don't make it look too good, but don't make it look too bad either. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, the last thing that I would probably do in addition to the lighting, I like to do this, you don't have to do this. I would probably come in and I would use just a simple lens filter to unify the entire thing. 
totally up to whatever you want to do. I wouldn't make it super crazy. And then I would balance out the light right alongside of it. So I might actually increase the light and I might actually increase the amount. All right. Overall, very happy with that. I think that turned out really cool. I'm interested to see what you did. So if you wanted to take a shot at this with the logo, go ahead, post it up in the comments, and we'll see you in the quarantine experiment in day four.